And now we're going to uh, go through some examples of calculations with the Maya Via Torah sequence. So the first one's going to mount the uh, homology of wedges. Okay, so uh, we, first we have this lemma here. Suppose that uh, the realization of L intersect M is contractible. Okay, so uh, which in particular could happen if L intersect M is just a single point. Then the claim is that this map K star L star that we've considered previously from the homology of L plus the homology of M to the homology of K. I want to claim that that's an isomorphism, at least when uh, I is strictly bigger than zero. And that's not hard to prove. Okay, so we, uh, you know, because the uh, uh, L intersect M is contractible, uh, we know that the uh, homology of L intersect M is the same as the homology of a point. So uh, in this example, as with uh, the rest of the examples we're going to be doing, we are going to be assuming the fact that uh, homology is a, is a homotopy invariant functor. Uh, we've not quite proved that yet. We will prove it towards the end of the course, but uh, we're going to assume it uh, for the purposes of the present examples. So uh, that means that the uh, because uh, the realization of L intersect M is contractible, i.e. it's a homotopy equivalent to a point, then the homology of L intersect M should be the same as the homology of a point. Um, and we know what the homology of a point is. You get uh, a z in dimension zero, and uh, zeros for uh, dimensions bigger than zero. <coughs> so now let's look at the uh, Maya Torus sequence. Uh, a section of the Maya Torus sequence is like this: uh, h i of the intersection, then h i l plus h i m, and then h i k, and then this uh, connecting map, and h i minus one of L intersect M. So now let's suppose for the moment that i is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so then the i minus 1 and the i are both strictly positive. And so, uh, as we said here, uh, a, uh, the uh, corresponding homology groups for L intersect M are 0. So we've got a 0 here and a 0 here. And when you've got a four-term exact sequence like this, with the first term and the last term all being 0, then that means that the middle map is actually an isomorphism. And that's precisely what we claimed here. Okay, so that's... Uh, that proves the claim uh, for the case where i is at least 2. But we actually claimed it whenever our i is strictly positive. In other words, we are also claiming it for i equals 1. So let's have a look at what this goes. Uh, if we do this with the normal uh, Maya Vitora sequence for i equals 1, so you get h1 here, h1, h1, and then you get an h0. Uh, h0 of L intersect M is z, and so you'd have to worry a bit about that. But uh, it's more convenient not to use the ordinary Maya Vitoris sequence, but use the truncated one, as we discussed in the, in the uh, last video. Uh, so if we do the truncated one, then uh, instead of having an H0 here, we just got 0. Uh, and that truncated sequence, as we proved, is still exact. So uh, so it means that we've got the uh, sequence here, uh, HIL intersect M, HI, what, so get H1 of L intersect M, H, H1L plus H1M, H1K, and then you've got the 0 group. And so exactly in, uh, as in the previous case, uh, because the h1 of L intersect M is still going to be 0 because of uh, uh, this condition here. So you've just got a 0 and a 0 on both ends of the sequence. So the middle map has to be an isomorphism. <coughs> the basic example of that, let's let Wn be a wedge of n circles. In other words, uh, n circles, all of which meet at a single point. <coughs> um, so we, uh, we, when we were discussing the uh, Van Kampen theorem, we calculated uh, the fundamental group, pi 1 of Wn, so a free group on n generators. And now we're going to do a similar thing with homology. <coughs> so this Wn so that's certainly connected, so uh, your h0 is just going to be z. Uh, <coughs> and what about the step between uh, Wn and Wn minus 1? Well, uh, Wn is Wn minus 1, union with an extra circle. And the intersection of Wn minus 1 and that extra circle is a single point. Um, so the, the lemma is applicable. And we see that the, H, the homology Hi of Wn is the same as Hi Wn minus 1 plus Hi of S1 uh, for all i strictly bigger than 0. <coughs> but we know about the homology of S1. Um, in fact, we know about the homology of all spheres. Uh, we did that in remark 20.11. Um, but in the case of S1, that's telling us H1 of S1 is the integers. <coughs> and... Uh, h i of s1 is 0 when i is bigger than 1. So that, uh, that tells us that our uh, h h1 of wn is h1 of wn minus 1 plus a z. Uh, and so inductively, based on that, you get h1 of wn is just z to the n. And uh, h i of wn is going to be 0 uh, when i is bigger than 1. <coughs> so let's compare that with what we learned from the uh, 
the Van Kampen theorem. And the Van, using the Van Kampen theorem, we saw that uh, pi 1 wn, as I said, is a free free group on n generators. And uh, so the abelianization of pi 1 wn is a free abelian group on uh, n generators, which is isomorphic to z to the n. Um, so we're seeing that uh, the abelianization of pi 1 is isomorphic to h1, and, and that's what we expect. Actually, we proved in theorem 18.18 .18 that, that that's actually always true. Uh, that uh, when you've got a, at least for a connected complex K, pi 1 is uh, the, well, the abelianization of pi 1 is isomorphic to H1. <clears throat> so now let's look at the torus. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so we've uh, we stated the Meyerowitz torus theorem in a form that uh, uh, just involves uh, uh, um, simplicial complexes and uh, subcomplexes. So we we better make the torus in that form. And uh, we can do that um, if we uh, triangulate the torus like this. We, uh, we need to, do, in order to kind of avoid funny stuff with uh, how, how the gluing works on the edges, uh, we do need to divide it you know, at least three by three. Um, <coughs> so we can do that. So then we get this uh, complex here um, where the, uh, the bottom edge and the top edge are glued together, the left edge and the right edge are glued together. Uh, that's our torus K, which is L union M, where L is this piece here. Where we've taken out uh, this uh, these uh, two by two square here, and m is that two by two square, and so l intersect m uh, is just like this circle here. <coughs> so yeah, we want to use the Meyer torus sequence for this l this l and m, um, but notice actually that uh, you know, the, yeah, everything is kind of easily seen to be connected, right? Um, this is connected, this is connected, this is connected, this is connected. So we can use the uh, the truncated uh, Meyer-Vitoris sequence, which uh, saves us from kind of worrying about uh, funny things that happen with H0. <coughs> so now what happens if we look at uh, H2 or H3 or anything like that? Or, or, or okay. H2 is different, but if we look at H3 or H4 or something, I mean, there are no three simplices or four simplices in any of these complexes, so yeah, all the uh, the chain groups are just zero, and therefore the homology groups are zero. So it's just nothing happening for k bigger than two. Yeah, so all we really care about is is the the endpoint here. So you've got H two of L intersect M, and then H two L, H two M, H two K. Then you get your connecting map to H one, H one, and H one, and then after that you've got zeros because we're doing the truncated sequence. And that's still exact, so that means that this this map here is surjective. And also up here, you've got your kind of h, uh, you've got an h3 up here. Uh, this is uh, h3 of k, but h3k is zero. Uh, so because of that, we see that this map here is injective. That's the uh, normal notation. We put this little tail here to indicate an injective map, and the double head to indicate a surjective map. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so then uh, we've put all these little question marks here because we don't yet we haven't yet uh, worked out anything about what any of these homology groups are. Let's start with uh, with M. Uh, so this M is just this uh, square here, and there's nothing, no kind of gluing going on, right? I mean, we have uh, because we don't have any of the top edge or the right edge. None of this gets glued. It's uh, well, M is just like a just a square. It's contractible, and so the homology groups of M are zero. For i bigger than zero. So we filled this in here now. Here this h2m is zero, this h1m is also zero. <coughs> so now we've got this L and we need to be a little bit careful. I mean this L, I mean there is some kind of gluing going on here. This bottom here, bottom edge is still there and it gets glued to this top and this left edge here is still, gets glued to there. Um, so what we've got is the, the torus which is this but we've taken like a disc uh, square out of it. Um, and we've discussed previously that, uh, that if you take a punctured torus, you take a, you remove one point or remove a small disc, then what you've got left is just homotopy equivalent to a figure eight. So our uh, L is a, a geometric realization of L. That's a figure eight, or in other words, a wedge of two circles. So by the previous uh, previous example, H1 of L is Z squared, and uh, H2 and H3 and so on of L are zero. Okay. Um, so now we filled that in here. The H2L is a zero. And the H1L is a Z square. <clears throat> so now what about L intersect M? So L intersect M, of course, that's uh, homeomorphic to a circle. <clears throat> so 
So that means our you know, H0 and H1 are both zip. But, uh, we're not worrying about H0 because we've truncated the Maya Torah sequence. Uh, so we've just got an H1 of L intersect dam is a Z. And uh, H2, yeah, okay, again, it's, uh, it's just zero. So now we fill that in here. Your H2 of L intersect M, and that's just a zero. And your H1 of L intersect M is a Z. <coughs> okay, so uh, so now to get any further, I mean, uh, yeah, we know quite a lot about what's going on, but they, we still need to understand what actually is this map here. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, this map here, uh, it consists of I star and uh, minus J star. Uh, so I star going from the Z to the Z squared and the J, uh, J star going from the Z to the zero. So uh, the J star is not doing anything. That it's, you know, the only thing we really care about is the I star, which is going from Z to Z squared. <clears throat> okay. So to understand that, we can think back to how we did this uh, in, uh, you know, in, in the Pi 1 case using the Van Kampen theorem. Um, so there, um, yeah, we had uh, yeah, we had this kind of U here and a V here, and we proved that sorry, a V and a W for the two edges of, uh, of this square, which uh, getting glued together, and uh, so we found that I lower star U had uh, a form V W V inverse W inverse, because you know the I star U is basically kind of going around a um, uh, a loop kind of in the middle. And we push it out onto the edge, and that's like going V here, and then a W there, and then a V inverse there, and a W inverse there. <coughs> and uh, yeah, so also the counterpart of this in uh, <coughs> in homology, well, the uh, yeah, it's kind of more or less the same, except that the uh, you know, group operation instead of multiplication is addition, and the, so the inverses become negatives. But then everything in H one is just commutative, so. Uh, yeah, so here we've got a v plus w minus v minus w, it all just cancels out. So what we're seeing is that this i lower star of u is just zero. So we've got the zero map here. <coughs> um, so what does that tell us? So that means uh, so this, we look at this map here. Well, the, uh, the kernel of this has got it coming from the image of this zero plus zero, so the kernel has got to be zero, so this map's got to be injective. And then again, this uh, this map here we've just shown this is our delta, which is zero. But the kernel of it is the whole of Z, uh, and that's supposed to be the image of this. And so that proves that our map from H two K to the Z is actually an isomorphism. Uh, and then similarly here, you know, this map's zero, so you know, image is zero, so the kernel of this map is zero, so this map's injective. But we've also already seen it's surjective, so this map is also an isomorphism. Uh, so what we conclude is that we've got a, a z here to make this an isomorphism and a z squared there to make that an isomorphism. <coughs> um, <coughs> yeah, and then we also have our h0 k, and we've said uh, k is connected, uh, and h, you know, so a connected space, uh, connected complex h0 is always just z. So what we've got is a z, and then a z squared, and then a z, and then everything else is zero. So that's the homology of the torus. And we'll just mention without proofs uh, some other examples. Okay, so well, at least we won't prove this one. But uh, n torus, uh, okay, a product of tori like this, uh, can be shown if you look at the kth homology of that. It's a free abelian group, z to a certain power, and the relevant power is just the binomial coefficient n choose k. <coughs> um, yeah, so in the case uh, T2, where, where we've got uh, just a t uh, product of two circles, that was on the previous slide. And so uh, H1 of that, uh, yeah, so the homology groups of that, the ranks are uh, 2 choose K, so that's uh, 1, 2, and 1 for uh, binomial coefficients, 2 choose K, uh, and so that's what we saw before. Uh, <coughs> Finally, let's look at the closed-oriented surface of genus G. Okay, so here we uh, calculated pi 1 of that before. So pi 1, we said, uh, has got the, uh, yeah, got two G generators. And then one relation, which is a product of all these commutators. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and then we know H0x, or, well, because it's just connected, your H0 is just Z. And H1 is the abelianization of pi 1. So you've got two G generators, and then this uh, this relation becomes trivial, because all the commutators, you know, when you abelianize, all the commutators become trivial. So you just get a free abelian group on two G generators. 
So your h1x is z to the 2g. And then if we go beyond h2, I mean you've only got one naught simplices, one simplices, two simplices, so h3 and beyond are certainly zero. <coughs> um, so the question is just what's h2? Yeah, I mean the torus case, well, you know, in my view, a torus argument, we showed that h2x is just z. Okay? And uh, I'll leave the details to the reader, but a uh, very similar argument actually works for uh, a genus uh, greater than one, uh, and we still find that uh, h2x is going to be z again.